The crafting of katana requires immense skill and is a long, hard process. The raw ingredient of the blade is iron sand. It's melted inside a traditional furnace made of hardened earth. The material is kept at 1400 degrees for three days and nights. The swordsmith has to work continually without rest to keep the furnace burning. Eventually, a lump of iron called tama hagane, literally meaning ball steel, emerges from the fire. Good quality tama hagane with few impurities is selected and then pounded flat and stacked. The material is heated again and pounded further with a hammer to flatten it out. The craftsman gradually shapes the red hot lumps. The repeated process of bending, layering, and hammering gives the blades more than 30,000 layers. This layer structure gives the blades their unique combination of strength and suppleness. Once the blade takes shape, it's partially covered with a clay slurry. The process of applying the clay affects the hamon, the pattern that forms a distinctive part of the finished sword's appearance. The craftsman visualizes the finished sword as he creates various patterns. After the clay is applied, the next part of the process is called quenching where the blade is plunged into a fire reaching temperatures of 700 or 800 degrees. This imparts the blade's sharpness. The heated blade is then cooled rapidly in water. The quenching process also gives katana their characteristic curvature. Only swordsmiths with an in-depth knowledge of the properties of steel can perform this intricate art. Polishing the sword is all that remains. This is an art form in itself and can only be practiced by highly skilled craftsmen. The sword polisher polishes the sword for 10 hours a day, a process which continues for three weeks. The finished item is a beautiful work of art, embodying the true spirit of Japanese craftsmanship. How much is a katana? Well, <laughs> it, it depends. There's many, you know, this is a relatively new one. It's not antique. Okay. Uh, it was made for Eido, but it's a real sword, mm. and it cost about mm, 7,000 US dollars, oh, I guess. Oh, my. Yeah, but you can get, you know, priceless ones, you know, like national treasures that you could never buy, and, uh, you know, some cheaper ones as well, but generally that's about what they cost. Ooh. In the blink of an eye, Eido practitioners can cut down would-be opponents with their sword. A master can bring down their weapon with enough power to cut open a helmet. Here, the side of an egg is sliced clean off without crushing the shell. Iaido's history dates back to Japan's Warring States period. It's believed to have its roots in Bato Jutsu, the art of drawing a sword and striking the enemy. Samurai rarely drew their swords away from the battlefield, as it meant either he or his opponent was going to die. The sword was only meant to be drawn for protection or to uphold justice. Skilled swordsmanship was essentially only required for self-defense or when a samurai sought out an enemy to avenge previous wrongs.
From the 17th century, Japan entered a long period of peace and stability, and sword combat grew even less frequent. Sword fighting techniques became a means of self-discipline and training. The philosophy of Katsuninken evolved, a Zen Buddhist term meaning the life-giving sword. This is the fundamental philosophy of Iaido. Chihiro Kishimoto is an Iaido master. He's been practicing for 55 years and has reached the level of 8th Dan. The final goal of Iaido is to develop personal discipline by overcoming your opponent without drawing your sword. You need to control your opponent without unsheathing the blade. You must be in touch with the peace within your heart. That's the final goal. It might sound like an exaggeration to say that it's all about personal development, but that's the philosophy. Over the centuries, Iaido has evolved into a practice for developing great spiritual strength and depth. It's now practiced by people all around the world who've fallen in love with this beautiful martial art. Oh! <laughs>